come to central Portugal and we've been house sitting for the past two weeks on a quinta, which is a Portuguese word for like a small holding. Yeah, it's off grid, so they're providing their own power and it's really interesting to see. We thought we'd show you around to see what it's like living in an off grid quinta and house sitting here. We've been looking after three beautiful cats, two gorgeous dogs, and 24 very, I don't know, boisterous, boisterous, <laughs> voracious chickens, well, hens and roosters. So that's yeah. been really cool. So as well as that, we've had an amazing garden. Okay, it takes like an hour or so to water every day, but oh, the fresh fruit and vegetables. Like for breakfast, we've been having muesli with fresh strawberries and raspberries. We're just tucking into some melon right now, which is delicious. <laughs> Mandy? Thank you. <laughs> I've been practicing my tomato soup recipes or tomato and vegetable soup recipes. There's been tomatoes and cabbages and kale and courgettes, capsicum. Mmm, so much fruit in abundance <laughs> and it's like, what can you do with this? Okay, let's make a meal. <laughs> yeah, which is brilliant. Pasta sauces as well. Because they don't have a traditional fridge system, they use what are called zia pots, which mm. is like a large ceramic pot with a slightly smaller one inside it. Sand is put between the two and water is tipped on the sand every day and then it's covered with like a lid the middle pot's covered with a lid or a wet cloth and it keeps the temperature down. It keeps it low, low enough to keep like cheese or ham even for a couple of days. Mm, it's a really good system, yeah. We've got a composting toilet as well outside, yeah. which is really nice to use. It is, yeah, yeah surprisingly yeah. so, because we've used a long drop before in New Zealand and I definitely prefer the compost system. Yeah, because it makes you, sense. Yeah, because you can then like bury it, dig it up again in I think a year's time and you've got fertilizer. That waste goes into the garden. Perfect. Yeah. And here we have the composting toilet. Very comfortable. Sawdust to go in the compost. And the bucket is in there. You empty it by removing this panel. And then it goes and gets buried down below. Great system. There's also an outside shower, which we rig up every day. We put the solar bag out in the sun. So yeah. you get your free hot water from the sun and you've got a shower that evening. It's fantastic. We've used solar shower bags before in New Zealand and they tend to last like two months and then they rip. But these are Swiss Army solar, like solar shower or even, I think they're called water bag. They're really good, hard wearing and robust. Yeah. Yeah. So we're learning a lot of great things from this sit yeah. uh, that will benefit us in the future when we want to do the same kind of thing, go off grid. So this is one of the great benefits of doing these house sits. Yes. And it's also very similar to Workaway because we know that Workaway, there's a lot of off grid sites in Portugal, especially, especially like down in the Algarve, Monchi and central Portugal and yeah. all other areas where people come along and they buy like maybe four or five hectares. They go off grid because it's expensive to run like your mains electricity and your water and all that sort of stuff down to the site. So they, they set it all up themselves. So they're independent. Yeah. And quite a few people want workers to help them. So that's what work away is. Yeah. You work for like four to five hours a day and get food, accommodation, mm -hmm. normally two days off. And this is kind of like a mixture between house sitting and work away. Yeah. Isn't yeah. It? Because, because we're doing a bit of work and helping yeah. out and, but we're getting, food because <laughs> there's an abundance we're here at harvest time so it's the perfect time to arrive yeah. everything's ripe and ready to eat yeah brilliant it's so cool we've got capsicum or red peppers and we've got lovely mini aubergine and um, so there there's a larger type of capsicum different types of tomato these are the, the roma very good for pasta sauce and these ones here are pretty cool they're called zebra tomatoes we should have actually eaten some of the beetroot, but we didn't. Whoopsies. So you can see beetroot is now enormous. And I think these are leeks. It's so cool how much can be growing when you put your mind to it. In central Portugal here, loads and loads of tomatoes. And look at the size of this watermelon blinking enormous and it's not ripe yet 
because this here is still green. When it goes brown, then it's ripe and ready to go. Speaking of green, look at these little, amazing little green chilies. They're going to be so cool. Pick them in the red, there tends to be one hiding in there. No, not today, but so pretty. This is a great system of watering tomatoes. I really like it. Basically, you put the bucket in the ground and there's holes in the bottom of the bucket. You fill it with water and the water all comes out and feeds the bottom of the tomatoes at root level, which is where the water needs to be. And every now and again, when the holes get clogged up, we use this little tool to go in and make sure they're unclogged down below. This place is like a lot of off-grid places in Portugal where the owners buy a plot of land and there's a ruin of a house, which they tend to do up and then live in a caravan or something like that while they're doing it up. So at the moment, this one, we've got solar power to the caravan and it's gonna get set up to the house. It's not quite yet, so we're just running a generator in the time being. I love this system. The water runs down through black pipes that are laid out in the sun and that's enough to get hot water. Simple but effective. Yeah, it's brilliant. I didn't realise how much you can actually run off a 12 volt system. Like solar power had always like baffled us before, but yeah. we, we've learned so much about it. We are, yeah. We're learning about inverters and solar chargers Charge and things. Charge controllers. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. this is going to be really <laughs> beneficial to us in the future. Definitely. Yeah. And oh, it's just so lovely with the cats. They've all got, the three cats have got such different personalities. Yeah. Mr. Definitely. Bobby is like the most talkative boy. He's just, yeah, he's the coolest. I'm loving, yeah. He's just yeah. rolling around non-stop. He's great, <laughs> isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, and the other yeah. two are lovely as well. So Bella is a stick dog. She loves the stick. And Leia is a patting dog. She loves to be patted. They both like some fuss and attention, which is great fun. Oh. <laughs> and you'll have to excuse the dirty and ripped kinter clothes because it's a bit of a messy job out here on the farm tending the garden, so there's no point in getting dressed up. <laughs> okay, ready? It's just, yeah. that's one of the best things about pet sitting. Because of our lifestyle, because we travel, because we don't have a permanent base, we really miss having pets. We were both raised with pets. Mm. I was raised with cats and dogs yeah. and leave with cats. And so the beauty about house sitting is that you get to have the joy of spending quality time with a pet or with some pets yeah. for you know between a week or a month a month however two long. months yeah. yeah 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 it's so nice there's so many benefits on both sides to house sitting which is what we wanted to have a little chat about really um as far as the homeowners are concerned it's great for them because they can go away and leave their property and if it's a big property like this they can relax and know that their pets are being looked after they're being fed and watered they're given a lot of care and love and attention the gardens are going to be watered some homeowners like to have video chats like quite often mm. and so that's really nice or just photo sent or what we quite often do is if it's a house sit We'll become friends with the owners on Facebook so they can see our post anyway to see what we're sharing with like friends and family. Mm. Everything's kept like strictly private, which is why we're not going to show you very much of this house set because to you respect know, the owner's privacy. Yes, course, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we just wanted to like show you some like some I don't know, some of the amazing things that we've found about kinter life and off grid yeah. life and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so that gives the homeowners a lot of um comfort and peace of mind that mm. their properties are being looked after. And as far as we're concerned, for us, it's fantastic, A, because we get the pets to love and enjoy, yeah. which is so wonderful. We get free accommodation for the time we spend here, so that saves us a lot of money that, that we're not paying out for. Yeah. Um, w here we're getting food as well from the yeah, Kinta, from the which is garden. fantastic. Yeah, So cool. Yeah, and we get a bit of time off traveling. We're traveling nonstop full time, and you need to stop every now and again and have a breather. So yeah. this is really, really wonderful for us. Definitely. And it's good for the homeowners. So quite often the owners will say to us, oh, yeah, there's all these amazing sites in the area. Like We're actually just like down the road from the tallest mountain in Portugal. And we thought about going one day, but we were like, nah, it's just more fun to relax here. <laughs> we're enjoying life on the farm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We'll save the travelling for another time, you know. I don't know about you, but one of the things I absolutely love about like being on the farm or in a big garden or on the land is just being able to wear, you know, your, your, like your grubby clothes. Your your old clothes. Yeah. yeah. Clothes. <laughs> I've got holes everywhere. I don't think this t shirt is going to last the rest of this job, is it? No, no, which is so cool. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that is one thing we forgot to say. 
house sitting the way we do it it's yeah it's completely free on both sides we don't charge anything and the homeowner doesn't make us pay for utilities or anything like that it's just mutual benefit both ways it's been interesting we've done numerous house sits and it's a great way of seeing portugal yeah. we've been in the countryside near caldas Serena. we've been in stubel to see a port city we're out on a quinta now and next we're going to praia del rey on the silver <gasps> coast so we're going to be back on the on the coast for eight weeks. So yeah. look out for future videos there and we'll show you a little bit of that area too. Because apparently that's the finest golf course in Portugal. Not mm. that either of us that play, we play golf. golf. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video and you found it interesting and informative about house sitting in Portugal and off-grid life as well. So if you've got any questions about house sitting or off-grid life, please put it down in the comments below and we'll be happy to answer them for you. Definitely. Yeah. Or ask advice if we don't know the answers <laughs> ourselves. Just remember, if you need a house or a pet sitter in Portugal, let us know. Yeah, give us a bell. We'll see if we can help you out. Brilliant. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.